get ready, let's go! Flying through the air with Coco, telling stories with Katie, Huey and I together, meeting my friends, friends that help us every day. Katie and Coco, play and sing, pray and bring you and I, we do our thing as Katie and Coco! So Katie, was this new friend of yours very popular too? She started out being very popular, but towards the end of her life, she became one of the most disliked people in all of Europe. That's a big change. What's her name, Katie? Saint Teresa of Avila. She was a Spanish nun, but when she first entered the convent, she didn't go there because she particularly wanted to live religious life. Her father sent her there when she was 16 because he was worried she was getting out of control. Out of control? What was she doing? She was hanging out with bad friends, going to parties, flirting with all the boys, was obsessed with fine clothes and looking pretty. Nevertheless, she decided to stay in the convent. It was less strict than her father after all and was happy that she had chosen somewhere safe for someone so attracted to sin as she was. Oh yeah, because in the convent she would learn how to pray and be good, right? Well, that's what she thought. But the convents in the time she lived were getting very relaxed, and instead of being taught how to pray well, she struggled to pray for many, many years until she finally stopped praying altogether after she recovered from a bad sickness. Her excuse was that someone as sinful as her didn't deserve to be granted favours from God. She stopped praying? Was she coconuts? But she was a nun, Katie. What else did she do? Remember how she was such a party animal as a teenager? Yeah, she didn't go to parties at the convent, did she? No, not parties. But she was very outgoing and the other nuns loved her company. Her religious sisters were so fond of the way she would talk that they would organise for people outside the convent to come and listen to her speak about the spiritual life, prayer, getting closer to God. You see, Teresa could speak for hours about God. The trouble was she enjoyed speaking to other people more than to God himself and began to love the praise everyone would give her when she spoke to them. I'm sorry to say, but I can relate to her, Katie. When all the bush animals ask me about our show, I always end up talking about how talented I need to be on TV. But I never really tell them about our friends and their Coco amazing stories. How did Teresa get better? God can be very patient when he wants to be. And he had something very special planned for our friend. He was just waiting for the right moment. It wasn't until she was in her 40s that he finally sent a priest who convinced Teresa that she must start to pray again. So she tried, very hard. But as I'm sure some of you kids can relate to, every time she began to pray, she found herself wishing more for the hmm. time of prayer to be finally over than she wished to stay there. But gradually, very gradually, God began to work in her heart until her prayer became a time when she was filled with great joy as she felt the overwhelming presence of the one who loved her more than anyone else. Coco amazing kids! Imagine if we got all pray like that, Katie! How did Teresa go from being the worst prayer ever to being one of the best? She kept going even when it was hard, and she eventually came to learn that praying was really a time of sharing between two friends, herself and God. When we talk with our fr close friends, do we normally think about what we're going to say and try to plan out the conversation? I don't know about you, but I definitely don't think when I'm talking with my friends, I'm too caught up just having fun with them that sometimes we end up talking about the craziest things. I don't even know how we got there. Yeah, me too. And that's exactly how Teresa discovered praying should be. God is our closest friend. And when we let him into our hearts, we shouldn't have to think about every little thing we're going to say to him. We just get lost in our conversation as though we're spending time with one of our friends. Ah, that actually makes sense, Katie. Oh, wait a minute. 
You said at the start that she went from being popular to being disliked. How did that happen? As God drew her closer towards him, Teresa began to become more and more separated from everyone else, and it wasn't hard for them to notice. People began to make fun of her for her experiences in prayer, many of them even accusing her of being fooled by the devil. What a terrible thing to say! They were probably jealous that God hadn't chosen them to be so special! I wouldn't be surprised, Coco. But even though she was very hurt by all of this, her love she shared with God was more than enough to keep her going. Soon, she began to realize that the relaxed life of the convents wasn't how God wanted religious life to be. But guess what happened when she started to voice her opinions and push for change? Did they hate her even more? Sadly, they did. She received threats even from her own convent to say nothing of all the criticism she received from the public and even from the church. As she started to found more and more convents according to their original rule of prayer and poverty, she was faced with hatred everywhere she went. Being called names, being locked outside in the snow, being forced to travel secretly so she didn't cause riots. It seemed that the world didn't want to be reminded of the way God wanted them to live. Feathers and leaves! Was there anyone who supported her apart from Jesus? Yes. In fact, there were many who joined her fight or who were relieved that they could at last enter religious life the way it should be in the convent she established. But to follow Teresa also meant they were going to suffer from the same cruelty. A difficult thing, but really a small price to pay compared to the joy of living a life truly devoted to God. Hmm. I guess Teresa's right. Being popular or not doesn't really matter as long as God is our friend. Well said, Coco. That's what kept Teresa going through all her trials and also allowed her to give guidance to others, even when she was struggling herself. She fought a long and hard battle, but when she eventually became sick and was called home to God, she was finally given the happiness and rest she deserved. Relief. God knew what he was doing all along, didn't he, Katie? Same as always. Let's ask St. Teresa to help us. Remember that God knows what he's doing with us too. You took the words right out of my mouth, Katie. Really? I thought they tasted funny. Dear St. Teresa of Avila, thank you for letting God transform your lives so you could transform the lives of others. Help us to pray well and come to know Jesus as our most loyal and loving friend. Please pray for all those in religious life that they continue to live as God wants them to. From now on, every time I start getting attention from all my friends, I'm gonna try to remember St. Teresa and encourage everyone to live and love God rather than me. That's a good goal to have. I believe in you. Yeah, I sort of believe in me, almost. And you know what else the kids want to do? What? To answer the riddle for me. You love me, don't you, kids? Oh, Coco, the kids can help you, but you have to give it a try at least. <laughs> Come on, I'll do another simple one. Ready? What goes away as soon as you talk about it? Ah, uh, food? Well, it goes away when you eat it, but what about when you talk about it? It's still there, isn't it? Any other ideas? Um, um, words? Words, well, we can talk about them, but they're still there. What, think about you're talking, you're not talking, and then suddenly you are talking, and then what's the difference? You're talking. When you're talking, what's happening? What can you hear? You can hear the words when you're talking. Yep, and when you're not talking, what you're can you hear? Nothing, you're silent, Katie. Exactly. So what goes away as soon as you talk about it? Ah, silent. Exactly. Good job. Ah, no one it took me a bit. I'm not very good at being silent. You are a bit of a chatterbox, aren't you? Like St. Teresa. She was a bit of a chatterbox too. Yep, until she learned how to chat with God. And before you ask, I do have a way to help you guys chat with God too. 
Follow me to craft. Yes, this is just what I need. Craft. Yay, it's craft time again. Are you excited for craft, Coco? Yes, I'm excited too, oh, Katie. Me too. I hope you guys are excited for craft because we're going to make something awesome today. Do you guys remember how St. Teresa of Avila had difficulty praying at the start, but then she learned how to pray really well? Well, I've got a special trick today to help you guys pray well too. Yeah! So we're going to make a prayer dice. And on each of these little squares, we're going to draw something that remind us of something in particular that we can pray about. So we can draw on it with these colourful textures here. And then when we cut it out with our sharp scissors and glue it together with our glue, it will make a cube or a dice and then you can roll it and whatever it lands on, you can pray about. So first of all, let's do our family because it's nice to be reminded that we should be thankful for our family and that we can pray for our family. So, okay, I'm going to draw me. It's amazing. There's my hair. I'll put some clothes on me. Yay! A face. Ooh. And a smile. Yay! And then, it's not just me and my family. I've got some other people too. Ready? Yeah, I'll draw my mom, my dad, and I'll draw one of my siblings over here. Yay! And you guys can draw whoever you like because all your family is different. Make it as colourful as you like. If Coco drew his family though, they would all look the same nearly, wouldn't they? Because, yeah. sorry to say Coco, but birds, they just all look so similar. So don't worry. Okay, so there's my family one ready. Now I'm going to do about the world, to be reminded to pray about our world. So here we go. We gotta take care of it and we yeah. gotta pray about oh, it, don't I we take Coco? Care of that. Mm -hmm. uh. Here we go, and the oceans. We're gonna take care of the trees and the animals. Yes, and the animals yeah, too. Draw me. Maybe we'll draw Coco. I'll draw him flying because I'm not very good at drawing birds, but you kids might be really draw good at drawing birds. What else is good about the world? The stars. Yep. Okay, we'll draw a star. And rivers. Yep, I'll draw a nice big waterfall coming down here. Woo. Shall we do What do we live in? I know you live in a you live in a tree, but us and the kids, we live in a house. It's good to be reminded that we are thankful for the house and Okay. And I'm going to have a green door. And a window, we've got to see out. And what's inside our house that we have to be really thankful for also? Where do we sleep? In our bed. On a bed, yeah. Okay, here's a bed. I'll have a red bed. And a pillow. All right, what else do we have inside our house? Food's pretty important, so do you kids like pancakes? Let's draw some pancakes. And do you like fruit? Got red, what's red? Oh, strawberries, I love strawberries. I love strawberries There's too. There's strawberry here. What else do we like? Um, what about some bacon and eggs? Maybe you like bacon and eggs. I've got some pink here. Let's draw a hamburger. All right, that's enough for the food one. You guys can draw whatever food you like on there. What about the people in the world who are sick? They don't feel so good, so here they are. And 
and you might like to pray for your friends. Let's draw a friend over here. And we got one last box to fill. Ah, oh, who do we most need to be thankful for? Jesus died on the cross for us, okay? So we'll draw a cross in the corner up here. And let's draw Jesus. And last of all, shall we draw his mother, Mary. All right, so now it comes for, what do we use these for, Coco? Snipping. And Snipping. Cutting We're cutting out. That's right. Now you might need some help with this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut around the outline. And don't remember to don't cut off these flaps because that's how we're going to stick it all together. Let's start. All right, so first of all, we're going to fold along each of these lines. We're going to fold inwards all the same way. We're going to fold this one inwards. this flap in. Guess what we're gonna do this with this flap? Fold it in, that's right. Good guess. Guess what? We're also gonna fold in these outside flaps. All folded in. Now we just have to stick it all together. So you might wanna put glue on all your little flaps first. All my flaps are glued, now I just have to stick them together. So pretty simple. If you need help, just ask. Just put one and glue that onto the next flap. Once you've folded all your flaps in, it just needs, pretty simple, just make sure all these extra flaps go on the inside of your cube so they don't cover your nice drawings. Here's our prayer cube. We've got all our different colorful drawings on the outside. And then when you roll it, let's see what's gonna happen. Oh, it came to my friends, sick people, and were priests. So now I can be reminded to pray for them. What's gonna be next? My family. Now I can be reminded to be thankful for my family and pray for them. And each one, I can be reminded to pray for them. You can make however many you like to remind you what to pray of. Okay, isn't that cool, Coco? I'm sure you want one of these. Yeah. So you don't get distracted. No, okay. Hey kids, if you'd like extra instructions on how to make this awesome prayer cube, you can find it at swpals.org. And I would love yeah. to see, yes, and Coco would love to see it too. You guys making your very own prayer cubes. And I'd love to see your drawings and whatever you think of to put on yours. Have fun. I never knew there were so many things to talk to God about. Crazy, I know. Taco nuts. Let me know how it goes, kids. Yeah, chapter us. See what I did, Katie? Yeah, I did, Coco. Cool, like I said, chat to us because we're talking about chatting to God, but instead they're gonna chat to us so that it's still related, but I'm Once different. you get him started, you just can't stop him, can you, kids? We better go over here all night. See you next time, kids. Hey, wait for me! See you next time, kids! St. Teresa of Avila, gotta love her! Come and play, play with Katie and Coco That's the way, get ready, let's go! Flying through the air with Coco Telling stories with Katie You and I together, meeting my friends Friends that help us every day Katie and Coco That help us every day
Are you searching for fulfillment? Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World.